The purpose of this video is to build a template for completing tests of two proportions. Um, we may want to compare two unrelated populations to see if the proportion of some variable of interest is similar or dissimilar um, between the two populations. So for an example, I've got some data here from a survey of students regarding whether or not they support the new legislation to allow carrying firearms on campus. And I thought that we would test the hypothesis that the proportion of support among males is different than the proportion of support among females. So in order to get everything established, we're going to need our two populations. And I'll just go ahead and type in here male and female. And we're going to need sample sizes and yes counts. Um, we're also going to need alpha and a hypothetical difference. If we are testing whether there's any difference, then the hypothesized difference would be zero. Um, alpha, a common value to use, is 0 0.05. And we will need to go to our data to get the sample size and yes count for the male population, as well as the sample size and the yes count for the female population. Now, of course, the requirement is we need two independent um, samples and that these samples have to both be random. So treating this data as such, I will go ahead and sort things according to male. That way I will be able to divide the two populations by clicking on uh, the variable of interest, uh, but more importantly, a, cell A1. I will hit Control shift right and down to highlight all of the continuous data. We want to make sure to sort everything all together. You would never want to sort one column at a time. So then I go to the data tab and click sort. And we're going to sort by mail and specifically largest to smallest values. I will use the scroll bar here just to ver verify that all my males are up top and all my female responses are down below. And I will also come into the middle and put in a partition by right-clicking here below the last male response and selecting insert. And the nice thing about this is it will let me move from the top to the bottom of male and from the top to the bottom of female observations simply by hitting control and using my arrow keys. So once again, what we are looking for is the number of yeses for, of course, supporting the campus carry for males as well as the sample size and those same figures for females. So I will use the window right key and the window left key in order to partition the screen. So our males are up top and I will go to support for campus carry hit and hit control shift up. And by hitting shift down, I will get rid of the label. Now at the bottom here, you can see Excel will automatically count and sum. And that turns out to be exactly what we need. Sample size is the count of 39 and the automatic sum of 24 is the number of ones where in the data ones are signifying supports. Now let's do the same for the female population. So coming down to support campus carry again male is zero that means we're looking at the female population control shift down Auto sum says that we have 61 observations and 28 yeses. So with that information, we are done with the data. Let's go to the template. The next thing that we'll need to do is to calculate the sample proportion, which is simply the number of yeses divided by the sample size, control C, control V. And we can see here that in sample, we have two very different proportions. Now the question is whether or not that difference um, is meaningful when we apply it to the population. Can we have any degree of confidence that the population proportions are different? Um, but before we get to that, we first have to make sure that we have a normally distributed estimator. And our conditions for that are going to go here. Um, so the first condition, uh, which I will put in using an if function uh, will be true if the yes count is greater than or equal to 5. And my value if true will be 1. 
my value of false will be zero. And the second condition, and these conditions will hold for both populations, will be that we need more, or, or rather that we need five or more no's. So the sample size minus the yeses, that's how many no's we have, must be greater than or equal to five. And if that condition is met, we will put a one as our return value. And if it is not met, we will put a zero. So we can see that condition one and two are both met for the first population by highlighting both of them and um, hitting control C and then control V. We can paste those over to population two and you can see indeed the mapping has carried over to the appropriate cells. Finally, uh, you know, this is good enough if you're gonna look at that each time, but if you wanna wrap everything up into one cell, then we can use this good to go cell. And here we will input if, and the if, the, the logical test here is that we need all of these conditions to be met in order for our sampling distribution to be normal. So that is we need this cell times this cell times that cell times that cell. So in other words, all of the returns for our conditions, if they are all multiplied together equal to one, then we will return a yes. We are good to go. And if they are not, we will return a no. We are not good to go. As we can see, everything is good. If we had very few yeses, we would not be good to go. And that's true of either category. So for a look at the theory that we're going to be using to build this template, you can click on the link that's appearing now, and it will walk through a visual presentation of why standardization works in this case. So go ahead and click the link if you'd like an explanation. Um, in the meantime, we'll go ahead and work out our calculations. We're going to build these formulas once so that all we'll need to do to move between problems is to click clear form. So we will start with the pooled proportion estimate. And this is the estimate of the overall proportion from both populations if there was no difference. So operating under uh, the null in a um, test for the difference of two proportions. And this will equal simply the sum of the yes counts from both populations divided by the sum of the sample sizes for both samples. So our best guess at this point as to what a common proportion would be is 52%. Um, now, for the standard error of the proportion difference, or in other words, the standard error of our estimator, which we will use for standardization, that will equal P bar times 1 minus P bar times 1 over N1 plus 1 over N2. And then we need to take the square root. We got an error here. So once again, P bar times 1 minus P bar times 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2 in parentheses. Um, we have closed off all of the parentheses here so that we can take the square root of the whole thing. I do that by raising to the power of 0.5. You can also use the square root function. So we see the standard error of the difference of the two proportions is 0.1024. And now to finish the standardization process, we need to begin with something that is normally distributed. In that case, in this case, that is our estimator, which is P1 minus P2. We need to shift it to the left by its own mean. And in the case of this test, that means subtracting from that the hypothesized difference. In other words, mu1 minus mu2. And then finally, we need to rescale um, this difference by the standard error of the proportion difference. 
and hit enter. So we have taken something that is normally distributed, shifted it to the left by its own mean, rescaled it by its own standard error so that we now have something that is distributed normally, mean zero, standard deviation one. And that result in this case is 1.53. So to wrap up, we're going to do something that we have done several times, which is we are going to work with the standard normal distribution in order to establish critical values based on our alpha and to establish p-values based on our z-test. So to begin for a left tail test, um, we need the z-value such that the area to the left is 0 0.05. For that, we will use the function norm.inverse or norm.s.inverse and we will input the probability of alpha and we will get the famous result of negative 1.645 so in other words 5% of the area under the z-curve is to the left of negative 1.645 now for the right tail test we need the z value such that only 5% of the area is to its right because z is normally distributed all that we need to do is multiply the above by negative 1. For a two-tailed test, our critical region or our rejection region is established uh, on each side by an area of alpha over 2. So we will use the same formula here. Norm.s.inverse, only this time instead of alpha, we will input alpha over 2 in order to define that probability and once again, using symmetry, we know that we can multiply that by negative 1 to get the right side, uh, or, or at least uh, to find where the right side of the rejection region begins. And that leaves us with the p-values, which are all driven by our z-test. And we must recall that p-value is to z-test as alpha is to z-crit. So if for a left tail test, alpha is the area to the left of z-critical, then the p-value is the area to the left of the z-test. So we will use norm.s norm .dist. Uh, inverse goes from probability to z norm.s.dist goes from z to probability and the default is the area to the left so that works nicely for our left tail test and we need to put in z comma true for cumulative we do want the area under the curve not the height of the curve and we hit enter so the probability that z is less than 1.53 is 93.66 percent which means that uh, once again, if alpha is the area to the right of z-crit for a right tail test, then p-value is the area to the right of z-test for a right tail test. And if we have that the, the area to the left of 1.53 is 0.9366, then the area to the right must be equal to the whole area under the curve minus the area to the left of z-test, which gives us this value. And finally, for a two-tailed test, we must find the smaller of the two areas and multiply by 2. Uh, the reason we need to find the smaller of the two areas is because when we have a positive z-test, the right tail p-value will be smaller, and that's the one that we want to double. In other words, we need to find the area to the right of positive 1.53 and to the left of negative 1.53 in this case. And if it were a negative z-test, we would need to find vice versa. So the minimum will choose the correct p-value to double. We then double it because it is a two-tailed test. And here we have a two-tailed p-value of 0.127. So we can see in this example that as long as alpha is 0.05, z-test is not going to be greater than z-crit for our right-tailed test, nor is it going to be more extreme than our two-tailed critical values. And we also have that the p-value exceeds alpha in every case. So in other words, we will not be able to reject the null in this case. We do not have sufficient evidence. Um, I do have a clear form button here, which allows you to take out all of the input. 
Again, everything will be calculated automatically once you put in your sample size and yes counts for the two populations, as well as your alpha and your hypoth hypothesized difference. Now, um, if you'd like to add a clear form button to anything that you're working with in Excel, you can click the link that's appearing in order to use that. Um, thanks for watching, and I hope that this helps.